So there is a definite ecosystem going on there. It's just not very enjoyable to look at. I'm gonna fish each one out individually. Right, I have been catching shrimp for quite a while now. That's the nutrient sorted. Boom, loving that look. Look at that. Hi, Matthew. Can, I, can I borrow you? There's a better fish in there absolutely fine with all of these cherries. Now I love an aquarium bowl as much as the next person. And to be honest, it's one of my favorite shapes or things to scape. Now I've done quite a few of them now and I've learned a few tips and tricks along the way. Tip number one, don't put pearl weed in it. <laughs> Otherwise you'll end up with this. This tank looks really, really good for a long time. It's like seven months old, to be honest. Look, we've got awesome plants just growing out the top. That's Hygrophila pinnatifida, growing out like a tree from the top. We've got floating plants in there which have definitely taken root in the bottom. Uh, there's no livestock apart from shrimp and I'm pretty sure there'll still be a good amount of shrimp in there. Uh, they'll be able to eat like degrading uh, plant matter and stuff like that. So there is a definite ecosystem going on there. It's just not very enjoyable to look at. So my goal in this video is to create a bowl that is really easily manageable more like looks after itself completely, and that includes the trimming. I've now the uh, ability to just leave it alone, uh, but I've not now the ability to stop trimming. Now, some maintenance is gonna be required in all of these type of tanks, like ecosystem ones, but it should be minimal. Like pearl weed, it's called a weed for a reason. <laughs> this is a lot heavier than I thought it was gonna be. So here is where we stand. The first job is going to be to take out all the plants and then I can see how many shrimp we've got, if any, and collect them up because I'll be using them again in a new scape. Yeah, I'm actually going to have to be really careful as I take everything out of this aquarium because even just pulling it up, it could have shrimp in amongst all of these uh, root systems. But shrimp are usually pretty good and they just jump off, so hopefully they do that for me. Oh, I love this pinnata feeder. Kind of want to keep that for the next one. So the bowl is now sort of cleared and there's actually quite a few shrimp dotted around, more than I thought there was going to be. Like, it's struggling to see a lot of it, but if I just, oh, I tapped it before and they all went nuts. But <laughs> I'm going to fish each one out individually. Uh, I'm going to just put them to the side whilst we're doing the build. Then we can put them back in the end. I'll probably add in some more as well. Right, I have been catching shrimp for quite a while now. We've got a good amount in there, so they're completely different sizes as well, ranging from adults to tiny, tiny babies. And what that suggests to me is that the colony reached a sort of size that was maintainable by the amount of food that was in there because we wasn't adding food. So that goes to show if you want your colony to keep growing and growing in size, you know, when they're having babies and adults continue new generations, you do need to feed the tank as well for that. Otherwise, it just sort of balances out, which makes sense, doesn't it, really? Another thing to note, this has not had a water change in like like seven months something like that and it smells of absolutely nothing so completely pure that's a sign that the system that I've been using works really well that's what I think anyway I was going by this if it smells dodgy it probably is dodgy <laughs> so I now need to drain the water out take out the aqua soil bag that you can sort of see sat there I'll probably reuse a lot of the material that's in there as well because why not you know it's all good it's all sort of cycled and everything like that I'll just top it over with a bit more clean looking sand around the edges Our bowl is clean, well, clean-ish, you know what I say, I'm not spending hours and hours cleaning it. It's a fish tank building channel, not a fish tank cleaning channel. So next we're gonna put in our Aquasol bags, which we've got down here. We're gonna put them in the base of the aquarium, and then we can put the gravel on top. I'll also put in a few root tabs as well from API, just to give them some extra nutrients, because obviously this soil is now quite old, so it's probably lost a fair bit of nutrients, so we're just gonna bump them up a bit. That's the nutrient sorted. Then on top of that goes our sand and gravel mix that we had in there previously. That's right here, I've drained all the water out. It's all ready to go in. That just goes a base layer on top. That'll cap all of the aquasol, lock it all in place, and then you don't get like loads of organic matter or 
floating organics in the water column. And I've always found this really, really useful for cutting down on algae, especially in the initial stages. And we can just chuck it in. What I like to do is just sort of pile it up first and then spread it after. There we go, just push it around. Now I'm gonna make this the front and then this the back. So we can have more at the back so it's like sort of tapered downwards. It just gives you a better sort of viewing angle for everything. It gives a better um, depth perception as well, I find. You don't have to do it that way. You can use the plants, but I don't know, just think it looks better this way. So currently there's not enough height in there at all, like barely covering my finger in terms of depth. So we need to go higher than that. Yes, 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 so that is an absolutely sweet base to start from. I've done it so many times now with great success. To be honest, the tank you're seeing here right behind it is exactly the same thing, just on a much bigger scale. And it's the same over there in the uh, rainbow fish tank. It's the same in the angel fish tank. It's the same in the Congo tank. And it's the same in this Amazon tank as well. I think the point I'm getting at is this is basically my low tech style of setting up a tank for really good long-term success. Now I'm not suggesting that it's gonna last for like three years, something like that. I mean, not many people want to keep tanks that long. Most people enjoy the process of redoing it, restarting it again, or just um, changing things around. Like, So you can do that whenever you want. You don't have to take all of it out like I did. I could have just taken, well, actually, no, the pearl it was pretty bad, wasn't it? <laughs> this one, it did have to start again, but any other tank I've got here, it's gonna last a long time it, 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 doing it this way with the bags underneath the Aquasaur. So I did have one run in my ecosystem tank that was where the, um, the one that was over there where the angelfish are now. That tank I had set up for just over a year. It was thriving. I could have kept going with it. I just wanted to do something new. So I know this system works long term. So especially for something small like this that you might have, you know, sat on your table, it works really well. So for instance, I also did one here in this like jarry thing. This was a while back, about a month and a half ago. The shrimp are doing great in there. The plants are growing great. There's no light on it. This is the one that's got the tap on it, by the way. And uh, I can drain it from that if I want to. Um, but it's never had a water change. I've never done anything to it. And because I've got a lid, it doesn't even evaporate. So huh, that's going nuts. Right, next up, adding in some hardscape. You don't want to go too heavy. I've got these cool pieces of like boggy wood style stuff here. I quite like this one because look at this. It's got these awesome lines of detail on it. I'm not quite sure how I should put it. Maybe at an angle going backwards, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> as with all hardscape, I just put it in and adjust as I go and hopefully we end up with something good. Not that. <laughs> yeah, these bits really aren't working for me. I think I need to go for more sort of, I don't know, dainty pieces. Okay, I found this one, which might work if I can get it in. Go on, go on. Oh yes, that could work. That could definitely work. So first of all, I love the way it's coming out of the top like that. Second of all, the level of detail we're getting from all these little mini branches, um, like almost like it's a, a river bank that's been washed away to expose the whole roots. I mean, it's kind of, kind of what has happened, I think. Uh, I also need to build it up a little bit underneath. So I can put some rocks underneath as well so it doesn't look like it's just completely floating because that's a bit of an odd look currently. Right, I've got to try and maneuver all this so that it sits in a sort of natural way. How's that? Okay, it's not too bad. Push it down a little bit more. Close a lot of the gaps if I can. And then around this one, I'm just using little river rocks, by the way, ones that I've found, just like exploring and stuff like that. So these things, like I've said before, these things don't have to be complicated. In fact, sometimes they look better when they're not, I think so anyway, especially for little bowls like this. That's kind of looking very rivery. I feel like we need one more just out there a little bit. Oh yes, this could work a treat. I've got one more sort of flat pebble, which I'm thinking somewhere down in here. Struggling to get it under. There we go. A bit further out. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. And now it's time for some detailed gravel. You guys know the drill by now. Look at that stuff. It's going to work beautifully, isn't it? Well, I hope it does anyway. It looks like it's quite sort of similar colors to the bigger rocks I've got in there. And then the, uh, I don't know, just get it in. As always, everyone, chuck it in. Just fill in the gaps that are close to the rocks and the hardscape. And then as you get further out, you get sort of more sparse with it. Do you know what I mean? Best way to do it, I think, anyway. A bit more closer to this rock area. A bit at the back as well. This is all adding biological filtration as well, guys, because you're just creating surface area in the whole tank. Boom, loving that look. Look at that. Ah, oh, looks so cool. It's gonna work, it's gonna work well. I mean, I'm not enjoying the lights at the moment that are constantly reflecting on the bowl, but I've got to do something when we're building this. And you know, that's the best way to do it currently. Obviously, it's going to be sitting back in place where it was, where it's got this light, which doesn't cause all those sort of funny squares on it. But um, you know, so we get those final shots should look really good. 
especially when we add in the livestock as well. Now I'm pretty sure this is not going to float up because it's kind of it's kind of just jammed in there <laughs> because of all the sticks and twigs. It's like lodged itself in place. I might just add a few dabs of glue though on a couple of points where they're touching those rocks underneath. And to glue it down, we're gonna use the same as we always use, which is a cyanoacrylate super glue gel. I use the Gorilla stuff. They don't sponsor me, they should. <laughs> um, yeah, just a little point down there. I can see a couple of little ones along there and that should be enough to hold it down. It's very light wood, so I'm not expecting it to try and float like really. What I'm trying to say is when you've got bog wood, it's, there's so much trapped air in it, it really, really buoyant. This stuff should be fine. Right, so it's been a few hours. The, uh, the wood's stuck down, that's not going anywhere, and it means we can start on the planting. Now, we want pretty fast growing plants, but like I said before, we don't want any pearl weed. I'm not getting in that situation again. I'm gonna start off with the epiphyte plants. Those are the plants that just attach to the hardscape. We'll get that looking good first, then we can go in the foreground area. So we've got some really nice pieces of Anubius Petit. I've got some Java Fern here as well. It's got um, some dodgy leaves, so I'll pick them out. And then we've got some more Anubius there as well. A little bit of uh, Booster Philandra there. I'll get some more actually in that because I really like that plant. And then after we've got those plants in, it gives us our base starting point, if you like. I always like to do these plants first and we can build around them. Oh, we definitely want some Anubius right at that front point there. Yes, definitely, look at that. And then again from the top view, this Java phone can sit right in the center there with the Anubius. The two work so well together. Oh yeah, we're looking good. This is gonna be brilliant, I can just feel it. More Anubius. I'm gonna tuck it right in underneath. Again, Anubius can be more shaded, so don't worry about the light not getting to it. It'll be absolutely fine. Currently it's pointing downwards, but it will lift up towards the light. In fact, why don't we just spin it around and then it's already looking a bit more natural. There we go, look, that's better. And then a little bit more round on this side as well, I think, just like that. And the roots are right near the substrate, which means they will grow into it. Not the rhizome, the little green roots you can see. To be honest, some of you might have heard that term before and not really know what it meant. Look, here's a clear example. That is the rhizome, these are the roots. So you don't want to ever sort of bury that part there because it will sort of rot and then it won't survive. But these can go in the uh, substrate system absolutely fine. Okay, that's looking really sweet, but I want to switch up now some different plant varieties and over here, I have got my plant storage tank, as you can see, and we've got some Hygrophila polysperma sat there. Oh, I'm not really showing you that, am I? There we go, oh, I just banged it. So we've got polysperma there looking awesome. And then on this side, we've got some Liliopsis brasiliensis, it's like a grassy type, but that can go well in the foreground. So here's the polysperma from Tropica, really good quality, simple to uh, prepare as well. So we've got the rock wool, we open the rock wool. It's as simple as that, some plants it's easier than others. And as luck would have it, this one is quite easy. Now when it comes to the uh, roots, you want to try and keep lots of them intact. So if I use a fork like this, just to scrape the rock wool out of them. Perfect. I'm definitely thinking we want some in this gap on this side. Look at that, nice and deep, locked in. Brilliant. Now that is quite a fast growing plant, but it is easily manageable as well. Just trim the stem, replant, if you want to replant. Eventually, I'm not going to replant anything because there'll be too many. And then the Liliopsis brasiliensis, again, nice and easy. Open up the rock wall. I try and keep it all as intact together as you can. This one's quite good because you can put it away from the roots. Just like that. Perfect. I'm going to split that up into a few pieces because I don't want it in one big clump. There we go. And let's just put one bit there. Why not? And one bit in this middle section. Yes, that looks good. Really good. And then one on this side as well. And then last but not least, we've got some Hydrocotyl Chipotita here. <laughs> it's a like little clovery style plant. Really good for small scapes and fine textures. And of course we have still got down here from when I emptied the tank, the Hygophila pinnatifida. This, I've had the roots in the water there, so I can put that in as well. That's gonna look so good. Okay, it's got a really good root system in it. It's just whether or not I can actually get it down. Should be able to, I'm just gonna feed it. The roots will actually find their own way into the soil if, as long as I get them close enough and they can lock into the back side of this. Okay, that works, sort of. <laughs> yeah, I like that. There we go, there's a little close up of it. 
looking good around the back. Don't know, you can't really see because I've sprayed a load of water, but the roots are entangled in that whole sort of wood structure. Hopefully that locks them in. Okay, now we can fill this thing up. Right, we need to start filling this very, very slowly initially, otherwise it's just gonna push sand around everywhere. I'm trying to drip it onto the coarser gravel that I put in, which does sort of help. In a minute, I'll add a water conditioner as well, so it'll take all the chlorine out of the water. We don't have a lot of chlorine in our tap water, to be honest, but you know, there'll still be some there. There we go, I've rested it on a rock. Gonna add in some API Acre Essential. This will purify the water for us. Okay, there's a little bit more water in it now so I can speed up the filling process. So that is the bowl complete. We've got our shrimp here ready to go in, but what do you say we go to Maidenhead Aquatics, get some more adults, just because, you know, I feel like we need more adults in there. These ones, we've got a couple of adults, but they're not, they don't look very female-y, do you know what I mean? Like, brightly colored and much larger. So we get some more females, add them in with these guys, it should boost that population. Plus now I can actually see what's going on inside the bowl, I can feed them and make that population grow as well. Hi, Matthew. Can Hello. I can I borrow you? Yeah. Go okay, hang on, I should probably just ex explain the situation. Explain the situation. So it, it might look like I've rudely just walked up to Matthew. I'm actually here today already filming something else, but whilst we're here, I'm gonna pick up some, uh, what do I want? Red cherries, red cherry shrimp. Red cherry shrimp. Yeah. yeah, and some ramsorns, please. I've got lots of ramsorns, but we've got some particularly nice looking ones. You okay? can never have enough ramsorns. No, you can't. I always say this and people are like, how do I get rid of my ramsorns? You don't, you get more. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got quite a few to choose from, haven't we? We've got, Dump, release. Release. Yeah. Um, these are, I think, I can't remember, some are jade green as well. Yeah, there's before, jade before green. Before you continue, could we just take a second to note that there are, there's a better fish in there, absolutely fine with all of these cherries. Yeah, he's a uh, sorry, uh, shrimp. Yeah, yeah. shrimp. Yeah, he's cherry shrimp. Black cherry shrimp. Yeah, true. Yeah, he um, unfortunately he came in with a little bit of a damaged um, tail fin, so we've just popped him in there. But he's got a really small mouth. He's still quite small. So yeah, yeah. Until he's a bit more adult, the same as the one at the top there. Oh yeah. Until they're a bit more adult, they don't generally predate on the shrimp. Obviously, oh, we're buying in semi-adult shrimp and yeah, baby betters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've got cherries up there. Sweet. Um, I please could I have like ten or something like that, please. Ten or something. I think whatever you can scoop. <laughs> Done. And then, um, yeah, some of the nicer Ramsorn snails as well. They are going to be going in my new ecosystem bowl map. Ooh, exciting. Yeah. You know how good I am at these little ecosystem things. I think you, yeah, you look, they look all right, don't they, normally? They're all right. Except for this one that turned into just a huge mass of pearl weed. I wasn't going to comment, but yeah, <laughs> just a whole... It's a little bit like... I was the, literally uh, just going to say grass. that. The, the guppy grass situation. So Matt set this up because these, these aren't guppies. No. Nope. What are these, Matt? Uh, they're uh, tequila split fins. So they're, um, they're a, actually a, a wild live bearer that's yeah. like super endangered. And rare, yeah, I was going to say they're, they're very rare. Yeah. But we now have like loads of babies yeah, in here. Yeah, there's tons of babies. There's another one back there looking the oh, yeah. plant. Right in the side. So we're breeding them out. But yeah, you. I mean, this is overgrown in some people's eyes. Yeah. I think it looks insanely well, good. The thing is, every time we move it, there's probably 20 or 30 babies in amongst there. So I would rather let the plant overgrow and let the babies have somewhere to hide yeah. than, you know, trim the plant back and have it all pruned and nice looking. Oh, I'd say nice, it looks cool, I, I like it. Looks it. Nice. This looks, it looks real, that's what yeah. I was saying to you earlier. Like, this is the sort of thing you get in the corner of somewhere and as a result, the water quality would be absolutely brilliant. I bet you have to do nothing to this tank, right? Yeah, clean the glass every now and again and yeah, away we go. So good, love it. Okay, let's get those cherries, please. Please. So we have got our shrimp. They've been uh, in the room for a good while now, so they're temperature acclimating to the same temperature as the water we've got in this bowl. So we'll be able to put them straight in. We've got ram's horn snails in with them, and I've got some frog bit as well, Amazon frog bit. That's gonna be the floating plant in this tank. Now the point of that, remember, is so that it grows quickly, you remove it quickly as well. So it's pulling nitrates, pulling, like cleaning the water for us as we go. But yeah, all good. Let's get these shrimp and snails into the bowl. Okay, the bowl is ready. I can now release the cherries. Here they go. Do, 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 so many. <laughs> that is quite a lot in there. Oh, some of the ramsorn snails are still a bit stuck. There we go. Good collection of snails, good collection of shrimp. 
we're on to a winner. So some important points to note if you guys are gonna do this yourselves. You need to be willing to do at least 50% water changes per day for at least a couple of weeks. Get yourself a testing kit, test the water. When you stop showing signs of ammonia and nitrite, you know you're in a good place and you can start letting the bowl take over and doing all the maintenance for you. Now, given the tiny bio load on this system, we're not gonna generate enough waste in a day for it to be at any detriment at all to the livestock. Each day, do 50% water changes and add in some beneficial bacteria as you go. As you saw, this tank started with cycle media at the bottom, but I'm also gonna add in the quick start, which is beneficial bacteria, just to really boost everything up and make sure we're all good. I'll add that in each time I do a water change as well. Now the tank itself will absolutely go from strength to strength. I've done this enough times now just to know that these plants are gonna do really, really well in here. We've got the fast growing stems at the back. We've got the fast growing hydrocotyl Japan in the foreground. Again, that spreads very quickly. And then the fastest of all is the Amazon frog bit in the top. The key here is the fast growing plants, as you can probably tell. Now the last job is to remove some of the water so I can actually carry it over to where the tank's gonna be situated. We'll class this as the tank's first water change. I'm making sure when I do this that I don't go too near to the bottom. I don't want to suck up any of those baby shrimp. First we add in another dechlorinator and then we can bump up that water level. I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this project and if you have, make sure that you're like subscribed with the bell on to ensure that you get future updates on what's going on in the tank. I'm gonna be doing it reasonably regularly. I mean, these aren't fast growing tanks, these, so there's not a huge amount of changes, but population booms and things like that, you know, any changes in water parameters, it's all stuff that I feel will be useful for you guys if you're gonna build a tank like this. So yeah, make sure you subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.